Hi friends, this is Ricky Watt, pastor of Havenwoods Baptist Church in Sims, Alabama, and I want to thank you for joining us for our midweek Bible study. We are in a series called Juicy Fruit, and we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And two weeks ago, we began this series by talking about the fruit of love and how the Bible says that they will know we are Christians by our love and that the love of God should so impact our lives that we allow that love to flow through us and out into the lives of others, that others would see the love of God in us and that in turn they would want to experience that same kind of love in their lives as well. Now last week we talked about the fruit of joy and we talked about how each of the fruit that follows love is an expression of God's love. So last week we talked about joy being love rejoicing and how that is shown through our daily lives as we walk with God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the joy of the Lord should be the strength of our lives. So as we think about that, I, I, I want to encourage you uh, to, to apply each of these lessons to our hearts and lives, that we would be more loving, that we would ask God to help us be more joyful, uh, that, that as we experience His joy in our lives, that we would find strength in His joy for each day. And tonight we're going to talk about peace. And I've entitled this Bible study, Can I Get Some Peace? And you may be watching this video right now and saying, you know, that's my question. Is there any way for me to get peace in my heart, in my life, in my family, in my, my relationships, uh, in my finances? You know, I need peace. Well, in Galatians chapter 5, I hope you have your Bible and turn there. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the Bible gives us this long extensive list of, of the fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible says there, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. So I just want to talk to you this evening for a few minutes about the fruit of peace. Peace on the inside. Peace in relationships. Peace with one another. And, and as we think about that, I want us to look at two misconceptions about peace. And especially about us as maybe we try to be people of peace or try to be peacemakers. But these are two misconceptions that we buy into sometimes. The first misconception is this, that it is not avoiding a problem. Peace is not avoiding a problem. As a matter of fact, whenever we think about uh, peace, sometimes we think just because you or I have failed to discuss a problem doesn't mean that we have peace. So in other words, if you just ignore it, that doesn't mean that you have peace in that situation. Uh, unresolved conflict in our lives many times is the root of all kinds of relationship chaos and drama in our lives. And so just because you and I fail to discuss the issue doesn't necessarily mean that we truly have peace in that situation. Maybe that's you tonight. You're thinking, hey, I'm going to get peace by avoidance. I'm going to get peace by uh, just ignoring it or, or not dealing with it. And, and friend, most of us have found over time that that's not the way it is, that we must be able to, uh, we must be able to say, God, I want to be able to deal with this and I want you to be able to help me have true peace with God in whatever situation, circumstances I'm going through. And then the second misconception is that peace is not appeasing another person. Peace is not just letting someone else win. Peace is not just 
you win in every argument or every um, struggle or situation that you're going through. That, that as we think about that in our lives, that we need to know that um, peace is not where one person constantly appeases another or trying to do anything possible to make some kind of false peace within your family structure or within a working relationship. Again, is that you? Are you the one that thinks, well, I'm keeping peace by just always giving in or just by always doing what I'm asked to do, you know, and, and I think that's going to give me peace? Well, you'll find out over time that that's not the case. That, that peace is not just trying to appease other people or make everybody else happy. And in the process, you end up being miserable along the way also. So what I want us to do tonight is I want us to look at three experiences of peace for the believer. So if you're taking notes, just write down there, these are three experiences of peace for the believer. And the first experience of peace is peace with God. That God wants us to have peace with Him. And just out next to that, I would encourage you to write a spiritual experience. When we experience peace with God, it is a spiritual experience experience and I will just tell you from my own experience that you will never know real peace until you know Jesus until you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ in Romans chapter 5 and verse 1 the Bible says this therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ in other words, God undergirds us with His peace in knowing that everything's going to be okay, that He is in control, and because we are His children, that He is going to provide for us and take care of us and give us everything that we need. And friend, there is no peace like that. You're not going to find that in any other relationship. You're not going to find that in money. You're not going to find that in, in stuff. Only God can give you this kind of peace. I heard years ago a preacher shared uh, the analogy. He said that within every heart there's a God-sized void that only Jesus can fill. And maybe you've tried filling it with other things. Maybe you've tried filling it with popularity or with, with stuff or maybe with money or relationships. And hear me well, no one or nothing can fill that God-shaped void in your heart but God. So I would ask you right now, do you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ? Has there been a time in your life that you purposefully, willingly, intentionally gave your life to Jesus? See, many people will say, well, I've just been a Christian all my life. And friend, the Bible says that there must come a point that we make a decision to follow and trust Jesus, that we ask Him to forgive us of our sin. And as a result of that, we trust Him for salvation and then we receive the peace of God or maybe you say well I'm just a good person and I would give anybody you know the shirt off my back well that's awesome it's great to be a good person but goodness is not going to get you into heaven goodness is not going to help you experience the peace that only God can give surrender will lead to the peace of God uh, God's peace covering your heart and life. So I'd ask you right now as you're watching this video, maybe God's convicting you of the fact that you need a relationship with Jesus. Maybe that you need to be able to surrender to Him and just be able to say, God, I want to give you all that I am, all that I have, everything about me. I just surrender to you. Because see, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He loves you. 
He's not mad at you. He's not out to get you. He loves you. And He wants to give you peace. And the way to that peace is to admit that you are a sinner. The Bible says all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And to realize that Jesus paid the price for your sin and my sin on the cross. He did that for you. He did that for me. And that if we would trust Jesus, ask Him to forgive us of our sin and to come into our heart and life, He'll give us peace like we've never known. Friend, if that's you tonight, I want to ask you if you'd just say this simple prayer after me. It's not about the words. It's about your heart and how you express it to God. But just to be able to say, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And tonight I give my life to you. Forgive me of all my sin. Come into my heart and life and make me a new creation. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. And friend, if you just did that right now, Jesus Christ has taken up residence in your life. You don't have to do anything else beyond this point. You don't have to be dunked in water. You don't have to join the church. You are as saved right now as you ever are. Now, those other things are steps of obedience. If you're truly born again, that you're going to want to do those things. But the reality is God has saved you if you called on Jesus. And right now you have peace with God that no one or anything can ever take that away from you. The second experience of peace in our lives is the peace of God. The peace of God. And out beside that, I'd encourage you to write an emotional experience. See, this is where God comes and intervenes in your situation and circumstances, and He gives you peace. He gives you strength. He gives you help in the middle of your struggle, in the middle of the storm. He comes to us, and He gives us His peace in that moment. As a matter of fact, the Bible says uh, in Philippians chapter 4, if you have your Bible, turn to Philippians chapter 4. I love Philippians chapter 4. There is so much wisdom in that chapter. But in Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 4 and reading down through verse uh, 7, this is what the Bible says. Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, we could preach many weeks out of that one short passage. But, but he says there, rejoice in the Lord. He says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And as you do those things, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Boy, I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. That I serve a Savior who doesn't just save me and leave me to wing it on my own, but He says, I will give you peace in every situation, in every circumstance. I am with you. And the Word of God says, He will never leave us nor forsake us. Boy, that's good news for us tonight. That again, no matter what we're going through, what we're dealing with, God brings His peace into our situation and into our circumstances. See, if we find no peace within ourselves, it is useless to seek it elsewhere. In other words, we must have the confirmation. We have that peace with God. 
and that peace with God carries over to the peace of God in my heart and life that I can be able to say, you know what? I don't understand what's happening and I don't know why it's happening, but God's given me peace in the middle of it. That's why I love Romans 8, 28 that says this, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Now you notice he said, doesn't say all things are good because you may be going through some really tough, bad stuff right now. But he says, if you love God and if you're devoted to Him in your heart and life, all things are working together for good. That, that He is going to make it work out for your good if you are totally focused and surrendered to Him. And then you will experience the peace of God. As you're watching this video right now, do you need the peace of God in a circumstance or a situation in your life? Do you feel hopeless and helpless? Do, do you feel weak and discouraged and defeated? Listen, you press into God. Don't you give up on God. He's not giving up on you. And so you allow Him to continue to do His work. And listen, when you can't see His hand, you can trust his heart. He is always at work. And then the third and final expression of peace is number three is peace with others. See, you see the progression. We have peace with God. Then we have the peace of God in our circumstances and situations. And then that carries on over to peace with others. Now remember, when I said peace with God, I said that was a spiritual experience. When I talked about the peace of God, that's an emotional experience. But then whenever we think about peace with others, that is a relational experience. That whenever I have peace with God going this way, it should always carry over to peace with others as well. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace. Are you pursuing peace? In your heart, do you really want to make it right with those in your life that you don't have peace with? Well, the Bible says this in Romans 12 and verse 18. And I really want you to listen to this passage because many people are confused about what this verse really says. Romans 12, 18, it says this, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. He says the desire of God for you is to be at peace with everyone. But please understand this. You can only do your part. Maybe you're struggling right now as you're watching this video with the fact that you have broken relationships in your life. But can I ask you, have you done your part? If, if you've done your part, you can't do someone else's part. It's just like in our relationship with God. God doesn't expect us just to sit around and do nothing, and He does all of the work. He wants us to do our part. And as we do our part in our walk with Him, He comes alongside of us, and then He does His part, which we can't do. And, and it may be right now that God is speaking to someone you, you are struggling and you are troubled over broken relationships in your life. And can I tell you, God wants you to have peace with Him so He can give you peace in your circumstances and in turn you can have peace with others, but you can only do your part. It may be right now your part's just to step back and pray for them and ask God to minister to them and draw them close to Him and do His work in their heart and in their life. 
And, and as God does that, that you may see the restoration of those relationships in your life. But God is faithful. And he wants you to know not to give up, for you to stay faithful, for you to stay true and certain in your walk with God. And as you do, that he'll help you in those relationships and in those other things to keep your heart close to the Lord. Now I want to pray with you. And as we pray tonight, you may have just personal struggles and things going on in your life. And I want you to know that tonight God hears you. When you pray, God listens. And not only does he hear you, he can answer you. So when we pray, I want you to pray believing that God hears and that God can answer uh, and help you through whatever it is you're going through in your heart and life. Dear Jesus, I come to you tonight and I pray for myself and for my brothers and sisters that are watching this video that God tonight, they would absolutely know that they have peace with God. God, I thank you that I didn't have to do anything to earn that peace because Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid it all so that when I call on him for salvation, that God, you cover me with your peace. God, I thank you tonight that you give us peace in our circumstances and situations, in our struggles. And right now, I know there are brothers and sisters who are watching this video who are going through struggles and trials in their lives. And God, I pray that you would intercede into that situation. And God, just give them your peace of knowing that, hey, I don't know what's happening and I don't know why it's happening, but I trust God that he's going to give me his peace in the middle of this storm, in the middle of this trial. And God, I pray that that would carry over to God, you helping us have restored relationships, whether that's in our family or on our jobs, wherever that may be, that God, you would help us to do our part. But God, understand that we can't do anyone else's part. And God, that brings us such peace and knowing that we can do our part and then we have to trust the rest to you. And so God, I pray that you would help each of us, Lord, to just be able to, to lay our troubles and our struggles at your feet tonight and walk away knowing that God, you are in control. You know where we are and you are the peace speaker to every situation in our lives. Now, Lord, we love you. We thank you for this time in your word tonight. And we pray, God, you would minister it to each of our hearts that, God, we would not even walk, not only walk in your peace, but, Lord, we would be uh, one who would carry your peace around as we walk with you each day. We love you, Jesus, and we pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. And right now, before we go, I just want to remind you that tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. And if you go to our Havenwoods Facebook page, you will see that I um, had posted a, um, a guide there that you can download, that you can use tomorrow to help you understand how to pray for our nation. And so I'd encourage you to go and uh, either download that or print that off and join us tomorrow as we pray for our nation. And as always, if you prayed with me tonight, uh, to give your life to Jesus. We are so excited for you and we want you to share that uh, with us and we want you to share that with others to tell others, hey, I gave my life to Jesus. And the way that we want you to do that is by you sending an email to me at rickywatt at gmail.com and I promise you we'll rejoice with you, we'll pray with for you, we'll send you a Bible and some materials to help you grow in your walk with the Lord. And also, if you have just a prayer need, something's going on in your life, maybe tonight as you uh, watch this video, God brought something up in your heart about an area that you're struggling to have peace. Uh, we would love to pray with you and encourage you through that. And again, you can just email me at rickywhite at gmail.com. But until next time, I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm thankful 
for you joining us in these videos each night. And uh, we look forward to seeing you real soon.